Bill Carroll, Zenny 62 Media, and of course, as you probably have figured out by now, if you've been following the series, we're working our way through all 32 drafts, uh, the team's cap situations, and of course, their undrafted free agent signing. And I'm going to spend some time on the Denver Broncos. Obviously, most people spent most of their attention to them uh, acquiring Russell Carrington, um, you know, you know, that's the big deal. I mean, obviously, when you get uh, a quarterback, a, a quarterback that everyone knows is a franchise quarterback with still probably somewhere between six to eight years, probably prime years left, uh, and the whole rest, let Russ cook thing. We'll see how much cooking Russ gets to do. But uh, what I will say about Russell Carrington Wilson, you know, a, a Virginian, right? Uh, my home state uh, first became aware of him when he was very young. I went to Knox State University. The president, when I uh, was a student there, was his grandfather, right? Uh, Harrison Beecher, no, I, I don't know if the beast of for Beecher or not. Harrison B. Wilson, I can't remember the beast of for. But uh, knew about him growing up. Uh, my only concern is that I knew his height. I wonder if some team might try to make him, you know, or move him to another position. Luckily, he stayed at his position. So. Speaking of the position, uh, George Payton, no relation, uh, is the general manager of the Denver Broncos, who himself was a quarterback at Loyola High School. Uh, he's from uh, Canada, Canada, I think that's pronounced, Flint Ridge, which is outside of Los Angeles, beautiful area. Uh, was on a couple of UCLA Bowl teams, played also some defensive back, got a bachelor's degree in history. Played a little bit overseas uh, in the Australian Football League, the Italian Football League, and had a cup of coffee with the... Uh, in the NFL before shipping out. Spent 14 years with the Vikings, working for Rick Spielman. Uh, he worked salary cap, uh, he worked in negotiations, player acquisition, and the team's analytics department. Got two promotions, including direct to director of player personnel, and was later an assistant general manager, and became the vice president of player personnel. Prior to that, he was a director of pro personnel with Miami from 2001 to 2006, and worked for Coach Saban when Saban was there. He got his start with the Bears here in Chicago as a scouting assistant, later became a pro scout uh, for two years and then assistant director of uh, pro personnel. And since in his time with the Vikings, where he spent the longest part of his professional career, they selected 13 future pro bowlers. No other team in the last uh, 10 drafts can say they've done that, including Justin Jefferson, Dalvin Cook, uh, Daniel Hunter, Stephon Diggs, uh, Anthony Barr, Xavier Rhodes, Cordell Patterson, and Khalil, wait, hold on, Matt Khalil and Harrison Smith, there we go. Uh, their cap situation, $237,431,867 in total cap expended, and most of that is tied up as most teams, it isn't about, you know, the 53-man roster, about 51 of the 53-man roster takes up about you know, 80-ish uh, percent of that. And they have $12,655,390 left. Slightly more offensive than defensive, about 53% of that is accorded, or a little more than that, about 50, yeah, 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 about 52%. Going to the offense, about 46 going to the defense, the rest going to special teams. Uh, the dead cap is tied up in just a couple of players. Six million to Juwan James. Six million to Shelby Harris, who got traded as part of the deal that brought them Rust. Uh, Noah Fant, one point seven, a uh, little over, almost one point eight, one million seven hundred ninety-four thousand two hundred twenty-two dollars. Drew Locke, seven hundred seventy-nine, hundred thousand six hundred sixty-four dollars, and that's uh, fourteen million nine hundred thirty-five hundred, fourteen million nine hundred thirty-five thousand six hundred thirty-four dollars in cap. That's uh, dead cap. And the cap numbers on the top players, uh, 24 million, unless they cut him before June 1st, which is highly unlikely, going to Russell Wilson. Then Garrett Bowles has a cap number of 21 million, uh, 18 million, 850 thousand to Justin Williams, Justin Williams, Justin Simmons. Uh, Ronald Darby is 15 and a half million, and Bradley Chubb is 17, sorry, 12 million, 716 thousand dollars, and all that's base salary, 100 percent base salary, no prorated cap, uh, prorated. Bonus, uh, none of that. Uh, then Graham Glasgow, 9.1 million, 5.6 million to Randy Gregory, who they're hoping can replace some of what they've lost in pass rush. 
Cortland Sutton, uh, five million three hundred twenty-five thousand. Patrick Sertain Jr. or the second, I guess, four million seven hundred six sixty-four thousand two hundred seventy-three dollars. Tim Patrick, four million six hundred six four hundred six hundred six thousand six thousand six hundred sixty-six dollars. Say that four times fast. Mike Purcell, four million three hundred forty-seven thousand six hundred ninety-five dollars. Then Brandon McManus, four million three two hundred four million two hundred thirty-one thousand two hundred fifty dollars. Jerry Judy. Who's got his situation, which is a whole other video? Four million one hundred forty-three thousand five hundred thirty-four dollars, and DJ Jones four million two hundred four million twenty-three thousand three hundred thirty-three dollars, and those are, you know, the major cap guys. And then, uh, because of what they did, inquiring Russ, their first pick was sixty-fourth pick, and that was Nick Benito. And if you care about things like uh, pass rush win rate, he's one of the most effective pass rushers in the class, and twenty-seven point three pass rush. Uh, pass rush win rate, 19 and a half sacks in his career, 33 tackles for loss. In the past season, uh, nine, uh, seven sacks, uh, 15 tackles for loss, 52 pressures, 28 solo tackles. Now, Fangio plays a, a very match quarters heavy defense, so he'll likely start out his career as a designated pass rusher, and they're hoping he can add, you know, some size and strength. And he may also see some some actual stand up linebacker duty. Baron Browning is sort of in a Similar role, maybe. Uh, I, we'll see. He was very effective as a true linebacker previously, but apparently he's going to be playing more of a hybrid position. Benito had a nice uh, time at the combine. 4.54 4 in the 40, 22 bench reps, 35 and a half inch vertical, 10 foot broad, and uh, a 704 three cone with a 4.23 short shuttle. Every single one of those numbers is very, very good. Uh, their next pick, with pick 80, was former walk-on wide receiver turned all-conference tight end. Uh, Mr. Dulcich and Greg Dulcich is 6'4", 242, good athlete, 4'6", 9 in the 40, 16 bench reps, 34-inch uh, vert, 10'2 in the broad, a 4'3'2 short shuttle, 7'05 three cone. Blocking is probably his biggest weakness, I should say pass blocking, because he's a, a pretty good feisty uh, run blocker. You know, he's not devastating, but effective, and he clearly is not afraid of mixing it up. He's lined up at the Y, the F, and the H positions, and he has a really good uh, variety of re releases. He tracks the ball well. He's decent enough after the catch. Uh, he's not, you know, George Kittle or, you know, he's, he's sort of closer to Jason Witten after the catch or with the ball in his hands and he is like one of the more dynamic guys, but he's good enough. Uh, tacks the seam well, reads defense as well. My favorite pick of all of is coming up next. Pick 115, Damari Mathis. His numbers are, in terms of production are solid. A couple of interceptions, four pass breakups in addition to that. 50% uh, completion percentage when he was targeted last year, 5'11 and an eighth, 198, plays bigger because he's explosive and doesn't mind hitting people, 4'39 in the 40, 15 bench reps, 43 and a half inch vertical, so that's right about playing bigger, 11-1 uh, broad jump, and a 4'22 short shuttle. Yeah, he's explosive, he's aggressive. I think he's going to end up uh, pushing his way onto the field earlier rather than later. I think he might see some time in dime packages, and I think he's a future starter, quite frankly. And then Ioma Uzariki is a defensive tackle from Iowa State. And his main calling card is versatility. He's 6'6", 313. And he can play everything from nose shade out to 5 tech. Uh, he's not a dynamic pass rusher. And the 5 3 2, 40 sort of confirms that. But I, I compared him to a little bit of Limbaugh Joseph when I saw him. And Limbaugh Joseph was a better athlete, don't get me wrong. But similar. Uh, decent explosiveness, 33 and a half inch vertical. 811 broad, 23 bench reps at 225, which is not that impressive to you, factor in the 35 and 1 8 inch arms. That lets you know that at that length, that's pretty good strength. 475 short shuttle, a three cone of 758. I think he's a rotational guy, and I think that he contributes fairly early on. Uh, I think he's going to be able to give you some really good uh, reps on rundowns, and he can, also, he can do enough on the interior as a, as a guy giving you pressure up the middle. And then Deller and Turner Yell, member of the all-name team from Oklahoma. I called him a very, very poor, I don't know, destitute man, Earl Thomas, 5'10 and a quarter, 197, 44740. 40. 10 broad. He missed four games last season with hamstrings, uh, tried to come back too soon and re-injured it. Played in 30 games in his career, nine this past season, 52 tackles, uh, two and a half tackles for loss, three interceptions and a pass breakup. I like his instincts. I like his aggressiveness. Can he be fooled sometimes? Yes. He can sometimes a little too aggressive. 
And does he sometimes go a little too much for the knockout shot and slide off or miss some tackles that he should make? Sure. I wish he would sort of square up and wrap up more often. But I think he's a good player, and I think he contributes pretty quickly for them. And then this is the one that has some people scratching their heads. And I, I, I'm not going to say I love the pick because I think this player might actually have been there around later. But I do like the pick, or even maybe not around later. I mean, they're picking again later in the first round. I mean, in the fifth round. But Bachelor Washington from Sanford is probably a special teams guy. Though though he's a good receiver, too. But he's very much like someone they, they also liked, apparently, Deontay Spencer. But Deontay was, uh, though they're both small, Deontay was a little stronger and, and you know, faster, more explosive. But uh, to sort of break him down, 60 catches, 183 yards, 9 touchdowns, right? That's fine. Also, 19 carries for 140 yards and 6 touchdowns. 14 punts for a 17.4 average as a returner. 2 touchdowns. In terms of that, ran back three two caps for a 23.2 average and also one touchdown that way. So that's three touchdowns in the return game. You add to that to his touchdowns in the running game and his touchdowns in the receiving game, you get an idea of what kind of player he is. You see him as a guy who can line up all over the place. And the this is a need pick to some extent. They were not good uh, in a lot of ways in special teams, but particularly in punt return average, right? Uh, their kickoff return wasn't great either. In fact, some would say it was one of the worst. 16.2 average on 26 returns. Their punt return average was 8.2, which is 19th amongst the teams. And like I said, he really does remind me of a slightly larger, but actually less powerful version of Deontay Spencer. Also not quite as fast. Uh, you know, still, 4.48 is fast. Uh, six bench reps, 36 inch vert, 10.4 in the broad, 4.32, short shuttle, 7.25, three cone. And just for comparison's sake, if my memory serves correctly, I believe Deontay was a 4-3-4 guy in the 40. And a lot of the other numbers were somewhat similar, but I think he was 40 inches or 40 and a half inches in the vertical, so that gives you the idea of Deontay's explosiveness. Luke Wattenberg. He was my center either 6 or 7. I think 6. He was my center 6 in my own personal rankings. 6-4, 3-0-6, so he's one of the you know, sort of larger full-size centers. Solid technician and athletic enough. 29 and a half inch vert, 9-5 broad, 4-5-7 three count no sorry four seven short shuttle and a three count of seven four five and he can he can work in both a gap and also in a um in his own scheme he's a good enough athlete and powerful enough to be able to do both and i think that's attractive as well and then we come to matt hinkinson defensive tackle from wisconsin six three and three eights 289 pounds 22 bench reps 37 average vert uh, 911 broad, also a 429 in the short shuttle, and a 7919, 719 three cone. No 40. Um, and once again, I'm not going to say I don't care because I do. I pay attention to everything. Uh, and it gives you historical precedent to figure out what a player might be. But I saw enough to let me know he's, he probably would have run in the 49s, probably the mid to upper 49s or low, you know, low, four, uh, low, low five flats as a, as a 40 time. He's a good athlete. Uh, and then they had a pretty interesting UDFA class. Christopher Allen is probably the one who's almost guaranteed, I say it's a guarantee, but it's very likely to make the team. And let's look at the, the past, right? Chris Harris Jr., C.J. Anderson, Shaquille Barrett, Philip Lindsay, all UDFAs. We'll go further back, right? Rod Smith, the leader in the history of the league in undrafted free agent wide receivers. So they've had some good luck in Denver with UDFAs. And Christopher Allen is a guy that, uh, you know, once again, like most Alabama prospects, came in with a lot of, you know, uh, accolades, was expected to be truly great. Ended up being a good player, uh, sort of a guy that did a couple of different things for them. Some people think he's going to be a pass rusher. Some people think he's going to be a, a true linebacker. He'll have to, first of all, prove he can play at a high level in special teams. And they could use that. And then... They've been playing uh, Bobby Massey, Cameron Fleming at light right tackle, and they didn't set the world on fire, I think it would be fair to say, and they didn't bring either one of them back. So uh, Billy Turner and Tom Compton are now in place, and will they get better results from them? We'll see. But uh, Sebastian Gutierrez from Minot State, remember this name. I think he makes this team, and I think he's at least a swing tackle. 6'4 and 7'8", 308 pounds, 5'1", 40, 28 bench reps, 32 and a half inch vert, 9-4 brought. All these numbers are good. 4-6-8 short shuttle. The only one that's not great is a 7-5-8 three cone. It's still not bad. It's just not setting the world on fire. And obviously Russell Fant's not coming through that door anymore. So we still have um, Albert Ekwambanabam. They have Eric Tomlinson. Uh, they have other guys that obviously they drafted Greg Dulcich right third round. And 
they also have a couple of undrafted free agent tight ends that I think have a good chance to hang around. So looking at a couple of them, uh, a couple of them are very different from each other, right? So in Rodney Williams II, former wide receiver, uh, so, similar to the Dulcich, but even more athletic, 6'3 and a quarter and smaller, 6'3 and a quarter, 235, 455 in the 40, 21 pitch reps, 40 and a half inch vertical, right? That gives you an idea of what kind of athlete. 10 10 broad, right? 416 short shuttle, 7 4 4 3 come. That's the only thing that doesn't really excite you. That's, the other numbers are really good. In his last season at UT Martin, he had 29 receptions, 417 yards, three touchdowns. They also brought in Dylan Parham, not that Dylan Parham, the other Dylan Parham, uh, as a UDFA. And then Andrew Beck uh, has been brought back as well. Beck was more of a blocking guy, contributed a little bit. Uh, I think that it's the fight. I mean, Dulcich is safe, obviously, and Ekwanabam, you know, he's the starter. So depending on how many tight ends they carry, if they carry four, then the fight is between the two holdovers and the two new guys, uh, you know, beyond the, the drafted player. And we'll see what happens with that. And you can never have too many players at certain positions. Like, you never have too many corners. I think that's something that every uh, GM believes. I don't think that's a, a thing that you just hear a few places. I'm a big fan of Jaquan McMillan. He's one of, quote unquote, my guys. I mentioned Damari Mathis. Um, who is maybe the number one my guy in the whole draft class, but not far behind him is Jaquan McMillan from East Carolina. Three-year starter, two-time all-conference, uh, led the nation in pass interceptions, right? Uh, 56 tackles, 38 of them solo, which is a really high number of solo tackles. Shows he's not afraid to mix it up. He's a good tackler, and that he was obviously in man and zone, right? He did both. In his uh, three straight seasons, he played a lot and led the team in interceptions in 2019, where he had three, 2020, where he had four, and obviously this past year, where he had five. That's what you'd like to see, a progression, right? 38 solo tackles was 9% solo tackle market shell, which is terrific from a corner. 15 pass deflections, which is 31.2% of the market share of the whole team, which is a terrific number. And in an old draft class, uh, he's a guy who's, as of June 4th, will turn 22. Now, his, the thing that's not so exciting is his physical testing. 5'9 and 3 quarters, 181, 455, which is, you know, okay, but nothing to write home about. 6'7, 6, 6, 3 cone is solid. 4 2, 5 short shuttle is fine. 36 and a half inch vert is run, maybe the most impressive number in a 10 foot broad. And he also knocked out 14 bench reps. I'm going to quote my buddy Pete Smith. Shout out to Pete Smith. Uh, if you're a Browns fan or really just a fan of football, period, follow Pete Smith. Uh, here's a, my, his quote regarding. Him. McMillan's lack of length is almost certainly going to force him to play in the slot. Quick footed and relentlessly competitive, McMillan plays bigger than his size would suggest and looks to initiate contacts as a tackler and a run defender. I could not agree more. I love quoting things that confirm my own beliefs about a player. Um, and then at running back, obviously, they've got Javante Williams, Mike Boone, and some other players who are competing in the depth area. A player that I spotted while well, scouting another player, which is one of the best ways to find players. So I was a big on Mike Strahan. He has a, uh, a brother named Prince, who's also going to be really good. But Mike Strahan was at uh, Charleston and tearing it up, right? Tearing it up a couple years ago. And I noticed they had this running back who just ran away from people often, right? And obviously, you know, we're talking about D2. Sometimes the Mountain East isn't always the world's greatest level of competition. But he ran away from people no matter who they were playing just ran away from him, like, like Tony Dorsett in his prime. And uh, it, sure, sure enough, he tested kind of like Tony Dorsett. He's 5'9 and an eighth and 181, which is, once again, very close to Tony Dorsett's side, who I think was 5'9 and three quarters, and played at between about 179 and 189, uh, to what part in his career you caught him. But he had 12 bench reps, uh, 36 and a half inch vertical, 10-1 broad, like I said, 4'4", 40, and a 4-3 short shuttle on a 6-9, 5-3 cone. He catches the ball well. He can play a little bit of receiver. He physically resembles a guy like Lindsey, but he's not as sturdy or as powerful as Lindsey, even though they're about the same size. Lindsey was a more, was a bigger 180-pounder, if that sounds, however that sounds. Uh, those are the guys amongst the undrafted free agents. I think that's probably the best chance to, to stick and stay. And there's some others who I think have a, have a shot, but those are the ones that I personally believe have the best chance. And this is a big year for them, right? If this draft class works out, it's going to help them to you know, compete, not just in the AFC West, but to compete to win a Super Bowl. And we're moving on to the next team next.